Welcome back to day three of our Harriet bra tutorial with Liz Sews. Today we're going to add in our underwire channeling and elastics to our bra. These are really the parts of the bra that help give it structure, make it conform to your body, and give yourself that tight locked in feeling. Let's get started. So now we're going to start by putting in the underwire channeling. My preference is to use a plush underwire channeling. I think it feels a little bit nicer against your body. So you have a plush side, obviously that's the one you want facing out, and then the back side tends to look a little bit more utilitarian. This particular one does have a little bit of stretch in it that can help with curves, though it's definitely not required. I actually don't have enough to do both of these in the stretch one. So the other side I'll be using this one and this one is stable and firm and doesn't have any stretch at all. So the stretch doesn't really make a difference. It just makes it a little bit easier to get that curve. So, so what we're going to do from the inside of the bra, right? We have the lace on this side. So from the inside of the bra, we're going to take this seam where we finished up yesterday. And I'm going to place my underwire channeling. So I want the edge of the underwire channeling butted right up against that seam. Then I'm going to sew this on with a straight stitch. We want to sew it to the seam allowance only, right? I'm only sewing to this excess fabric that's beyond the seam allowance. I don't want to sew into the actual cup just yet. We're going to sew this all the way around. And then I like to stop probably an inch and a half from the outer edge. So the edge that has the elastic back band. I'm gonna stop about a half an inch from there. But we wanna start at the very top of the center front. I don't use any pins when I'm doing this. I do it all on the machine with my hands. And so I'm gonna switch you guys over to the sewing machine and show you how I do it. So I have all of the fabric to this side. I'm working with just the seam allowance. I line it up so the edge of my channeling is butted up with the edge of this line of stitching. The first thing I want to do is I want to move my needle two positions this way. That way it's closer to the edge. And then I just sew, sew a straight stitch lining up as I go. Like I said, you want to stop about an inch and a half from the end. Just back tack to make sure that stays in place. And then we're going to leave our, our channeling like this for now. The other thing we're going to do with the channeling is finish up the inner bridge side, so the center front. You just want to go back and forth a couple times to close that off. So we're going to leave our channeling for now. It's just free and floating and hanging out in there. And we're going to go to our bottom band elastic. So the bottom band elastic is going to be a wider version of the two. So this one has a sawtooth sort of pico edge on it, but they also have bottom band elastic that might have a much softer curve to it. Generally you have a plush side. This goes against your body and then a more utilitarian side that's what's going to get hidden away in, into the bra so to sew on your pico elastic you want to take the bra facing right side up like this and you want the plush facing right side up like this all you're going to do is align it 
the straight edge of your elastic to the straight bottom edge of your garment. We're going to sew with a zigzag stitch as close to the pico edge as you can. And you want to do this through the full length of the bottom band. I don't put any stretch or tension on this elastic when I'm putting in. I just want to sew it on exactly one for one. So unfortunately the GoPro ran out of batteries, so I didn't get a video of that sewn on. But you guys can see here, um, I've done the Pico stitch or the line of zigzag stitching really close to the Pico and it's on the right side of the bra. So the next thing we're gonna do is go to the inside, flip this around to the inside, and we're gonna do another line of zigzag stitching as close as we can to the straight side of the elastic. So the way that that's gonna look is you're gonna have this plush part of the Pico is gonna be facing your body, right? Because now we're looking at the lining. And then on the outside, you'll just see that decorative little edge peeking out. So row of st zigzag stitches right next to the straight side. So I know I can't film it while I'm sewing right now, but basically I just line up the eighth inch of my, my foot guideline to the straight edge of the elastic, and then I'm going to sew with a zigzag stitch along there. So once you've done that, it should look like this. You see you got the line of stitching that we did next to our pico edge, and then the line of stitching that we did just now next to the straight edge. I did switch out my bobbin to a, a darker navy color thread just so it doesn't show up as easily on this back band. So that's a good tip. Um, when you're sewing on these, these pico elastics, whatever's in your bobbin is what's gonna show up on the outside of the bra. So you want your bobbin thread color to match whatever you want it to look like. Here you can see why we just left the um, the underwire channeling free for now because the bottom elastic sort of comes up into that same space. So once we're done putting the elastics in, then we will attach it down that underwire channeling and it's just gonna go over the top of that, that bottom band elastic right at the bottom of your cup. So the next step is to do the top band elastic. That one is generally going to be your narrower of the two picos. So this is an example of a nice um, soft pico elastic. So this one is more sawtooth design. And honestly, this one's pretty soft. You wouldn't feel it. But I think that this one is even softer. And so if you are particularly um, have problems with irritation sort of like under your arm and stuff like that with chafing i would definitely recommend trying to find a pico like this which has a much smoother softer curve to it so we're going to apply this just in the same way that we've done the last one you see that we have a plush side and then a not so plush side and we want the plush against our body just like for the bottom band we're going to take the right side of the bra facing up we want the plush side of the elastic facing up and we're going to align a straight edge with a straight edge of our bra and then sew with a zigzag as close to the pico as you can. So I'm in the process of sewing this on and there's a couple things that I wanted to point out. So I've just finished doing the band and now I'm into the front part of the bra here. You want to make sure that when you're sewing this on, you get that underwire channeling out of the way. That's why we left it free for the last inch and a half or so. And you also want to make sure that seam allowance, um, where the cups meet the bar, bra, are facing towards your back band. The other thing I want to point out is once you get to that wire line, you want to start putting some tension on your elastic from there all the way up to the end. Uh, that will help it just curve around your body a little bit better. So here we have it sewn on with the zigzag very close to the pico. Like I said, I put some tension on the elastic just in this curve on the cup. That'll help it give it a nice curve as well. Um, and then I made sure that I didn't catch my underwire channeling and that the seam allowance that the underwire channeling is attached to is facing towards the back of the bra. 
So just like we did with the band, the bottom band, you're going to turn it around to the inside and then fold this elastic to the inside. And sew with a zigzag stitch as close to the straight edge as you can. You've done it right if when you turn it to the right side you just see a little bit of that decorative edge peeking out. So here's what it looks like from the inside when you've done that. And then from the outside you should just see a little bit of the decorative edge with a line of zigzag stitching. The last thing that we're going to do today is finish attaching the underwire chain link to the bra. Now I'm going to again use a method that is not the way that most directions tell you to do it. I'm going to start from the inside of the bra and I'm just going to sew a, a line of stitching close to this free edge of my underwire channeling. A lot of places tell you to do this from the top of the bra but I've found that I always mess that up um, and I'll I'll make it too narrow and then I can't fit my wire through. So I like to do it from the inside first, do that line of stitching, and then I'll come around to the outside and do another line of stitching an eighth of an inch away from my seam line. So just like when we put the underwire channeling in first, I'm gonna line it up with, with the eighth inch of guide on my foot. I'm gonna take the needle and move it over two positions with a straight stitch and then just go along this edge. So here you can barely see that I've stitched this in along this edge um, and then from the outside it looks fairly even now. The last thing that we're going to do today is the second line of top stitching and like I said that's going to be about just a scant eighth of an inch in from where our cup attaches to the cradle. So I've got, this is the seam where it attaches to the cradle. So I've got my, my presser foot lined up with that seam. I have my needle moved over two spots and I'm just going to, again, follow that curve with a straight stitch. So hopefully you guys have been following along and you have something that looks like this. Honestly, it doesn't look very much different from the outside from when we finished yesterday, but all of the work we've done today has been on the inside, right? So we put in this bottom band, we put in the underarm elastic, and then we finished putting in our channeling. Come back tomorrow and we will finish this bra up. See you next time.